We've had important shows before. We've had great shows before. But this one puts them both together at the same time. Bye weeks are here. Monster bye weeks next week. Uh, there is uh, so many injuries going on. We're going to update you on, on the injury status of these players and take a look at what running backs, what wide receivers are worth burning your waiver priority. How much should you spend? How do you prioritize them? There's a lot to get into. You're going to love this episode. I guarantee it. Like the video, subscribe, smash that bell, and enjoy the show. Foot Clan, when you're traveling to a destination and you don't know the language, it can be challenging. Thankfully, there's Babbel, the number one selling language learning app. Through Babbel's bite-sized lessons, you'll learn new language skills that you can actually use in the real world. We have, a, look, we're in Arizona. There is a lot of Spanish speaking going on over here. And look, high school, it did not get it done for me. Thankfully, I can jump into Babbel, and they're helping me learn. You know, like, I'm working on the Espanol, Jason. It's, it's still not where it needs to be. Yeah, but a little I little fifteen minute bite sized. But I know sessions. I can get there with Babbel because like other language learning apps they use AI for their lesson plans. But Babbel lessons were created by over one hundred language experts, handcrafted. With Babbel, you can choose from fourteen different languages Spanish, French, Italian, German, and more. Plus, Babbel speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and your accent. I that's where my wife laughs. <laughs> at me frequently when I try and use the, the accent correctly. But again, Babbel is how I can improve. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code FOOTBALLERS. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Code FOOTBALLERS. Babbel. Language for life. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you are so nasty. And holy <laughs> crap. Whew. I, I don't even have eyebrows anymore. <laughs> that game. The NFL has been sensational this year. Sensational. Our primetime games, we are, we are getting spoiled with what we are able to watch uh, on Thursday, Sunday night, Monday night. The drama. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but uh, if you missed the game. Or if you just turned it off at halftime. Or from the you... extremely boring yuck fest of the first half of last night. Hey, you missed. <laughs> oh. Yes, you did. We will get into that. But I want to welcome you into the podcast. I'm your host for today, Mike, the fantasy hitman right, right. joined by my best friend, Oh, he's doing a little shimmy. A little it's a shim? Little, it's a little shim shim. Big nasty little shim. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, and the cardboard bear extraordinaire, Jay Grizz. He's holding it down over there. Do we have a bear roar somewhere? I don't know. But he's holding it down. <laughs> Thank you, Jay, for, for jumping in here. Andy will be back tomorrow. If you want to watch this show, we are on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Follow us on the socials. Uh, Twitter is at the FF Ballers. I am at FF Hitman. Jason is at Jason FFL, and Andy is at Andy Holloway. On today's show, we're going to talk about this Monday night game in just a moment. Where there's smoke, there's fire. A couple, a couple players. Will they continue what they are doing, or will they just reside in the smoke, not actually igniting into fire? News and notes, a lot, a lot to go mm -hmm. over, and then the waiver wire. Which, I mean, th this is a this is a crazy waiver wire this week. There are a lot of different choices. Yeah, a lot of options and the first week of bye week. So, and, and a lot of injuries this last week. So when you combine the amount of players that went down with the amount of players that are just gone from playing this week, very, very important waiver wire week. And we have a giveaway going on right now. We are giving away a signed Darren Waller jersey. <laughs> goo 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 goo. FootClanGiveaway.com is completely free to enter. You just do a couple things for the, to support the show, and you're entered to win that jersey. Monday night, 
We went into halftime. Mm -hmm. And it was 10 to 3. 10 to 3. The Ravens forgot how to play football. Yes, on both sides of the ball, they they were actually extremely extremely lucky that it was just 10 to 3. I, uh, a couple had a red zone turnover for uh, the Colts that looked like the Colts should and could just dominate that game. Yes, early on, you had Jonathan Taylor breaking off. Yeah, like the first play, almost the first play from scrimmage was yeah, a seventy plus yard reception. Just beautiful. Um, and then the second half, apparently, uh, Lamar Jackson woke up and said, "Oh, where am I? I should play football." And I was so I was in a position. I, I talked about this late on yesterday's show, where I needed either basically a goose from Hollywood Brown mm -hmm. or a massive performance, depending on which league I cared about. And at halftime, I'm like, okay, let's go. He hadn't caught a pass. Lamar hadn't done anything. Complete goose, and it went all the way to the other side. Yes, it did. So the final stat lines: Carson Wentz over 400 passing yards, two touchdowns. Lamar Jackson. 440 plus passing yards, four passing touchdowns, and added 14 carries for 62 yards on the ground. Lamar Jackson went full nuclear reactor. And on top of that, then you had Mark Andrews, almost 150 yards, two touchdowns. Hollywood Brown. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Nine for yeah. 125 and two. Love that guy. This was a night, and I tweeted it out. I, I can't remember a Monday night game where things swung so wildly where people needed miracles to happen, and there were they were just handing them out. It was just, oh, what's this in my pocket? Oh, here's another Monday night miracle for you. Oh, here's an, a combination of 80-plus fantasy points for you. Meanwhile, of course, for every miracle, there were nightmares, people sending in screenshots of, I had a 1% chance mm -hmm. given by my platform, and I needed Lamar and Mark Andrews to do something that was humanly impossible, and yet here we are. Here's, like, a, here's we, a couple quotes yes, please. from uh, people and their stories of last night. Quote, Lamar and Andrews got me back from a 90-point deficit. That is absurd. That's crazy. Uh, came back and won by 0 0.4 points thanks to Lamar and Hollywood final overtime score. So that person needed six touchdowns plus 400 passing yards in, and in overtime. <laughs> they needed it to go to overtime. They needed even more. Just impossible for that to happen. My favorite one, though, and this is... The other side of the coin, Mike. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was up by 80 going into Monday night, and I turned the game off at halftime. Oh. <laughs> I woke up losing by one. What? I mean, I am so sorry for your loss, but the, I'm also so excited for their win. The fantasy scores this weekend were astronomical. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, like our own Al Borland scored – like it, an obscene, obscene amount of fantasy points in our half PPR league. It was like 170 plus or something. 150 is usually a guaranteed win. That's like the highest of the week in our league. 120 is that's a, that's an incredible week. That's great. You're more than likely going to win. 150 points is an is a guaranteed win. Yeah. He had a, over 170 points, and then Mark Andrews he lost <laughs> goes 150 and two and. Owl was this person who could have woke up and realized that he had unfortunately lost and yeah. passed away. The, the owl carcass time. was on the ground in the morning. So that was a wild, oh my gosh, just an absolute wild game. Jonathan Taylor, monster performance, two touchdowns, Michael Pittman. Yeah, he's the name that we need to bring up. Okay. Because we have been seeing and saying to trade for him because the targets, the targets, the receptions, they've been there. Um, he hasn't done a ton for fantasy. If you look back at his game log, you're like, meh, mediocre finishes. But he just hasn't been getting the touchdowns. He had another seven targets, six for 89, and got the touchdown this week. So you you see the upside, and I, I, I think it's legit. I think he's uh, the, the one for this team. I'm not scared of when T.Y. Hilton comes back at all. Pittman is the alpha here. Is there anything else you want to speculate moving forward from this game? Like, where is – where is Hollywood Brown 
for you. If, if just like a quick off the uh, cuff here, rest of season rankings. He's top fifteen wide receiver. Okay, uh, I, he's just so consistent. He's necessary to the team. Um, he appears to be the number one read. And again, similar to Pittman, he has Rashad Bateman coming to the team at some point soon, probably next week. Because it was very, it was was he going to be active for this game? They decided not to do it. Rookie, there was their first round rookie pick. But this is a rookie coming in to an established, dominating Hollywood Brown. I don't see him. There's just no reason to break up what is clearly working for uh, the Ravens. And if you if you just take away or or maybe give the dropped passes that hit Hollywood in the hands. You just uh, give him one of those, he's the top three guy. But, but the consistency week after week after week after week after week after week after week, going back to last year, yes. you cannot uh, go away from Hollywood. Uh, but <laughs> you want it again? Yeah, dude. Oh. Uh, to add to the Rashad Bateman speculation of, of I, I think he should be stashed at this point. Sammy Watkins left this game very early with an injury, so there could be an immediate position for Rashad Bateman to step in and make some noise. Also, one other thing worth noting. Um, I, I think Harbaugh is a very good coach, personally. And he has always tailored his game plan to his team, right? We, you saw a completely different offense when Joe Flacco was the guy. Then they they sure. made it for Lamar. And you're no when you lose all of your running backs, when you lose J.K. Dobbins and you lose Gus Edwards, and you're signing these guys from 2016, um, this is where Lamar Jackson is a, is a is a passing quarterback. You know what I mean? Like, the, obviously he got it done on the ground and still can, but as a team. You know, uh, Tyson Williams, four carries. Latavius Murray, six carries. Devonta Freeman, one carry. This isn't the Ravens of last year because the personnel can't be. So when you're talking about Bateman, when you're talking about Hollywood, when you're talking about Mark Andrews, the pie was so small last year because they were able to just dominate on the ground. They can't do it this year, so I'm, I'm not too worried. I'm, I'm actually excited for the prospects of the receiving game, and I think that covers Monday Night Football. Lamar completed 37 of 43 passes. That's pretty, like, pretty good. That, oh, that was a sensational game. Hopefully you were on the the right side where you woke up and you were a winner. Let's move on. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. All right, let's talk about some players, see if they are truly heating up or if they're going to stay in the smoke or are they going to jump to fully inflamed and on fire. Jason Leonard Fournette, Buccaneers running back the first three weeks of the season. It was, you know, ho-hum, kind of same old, same old. Ronald Jones is mixing in. You got Giovanni Bernard, uh, Leonard Fournette. In that, in that stretch of those first three weeks, did not finish inside the top 24, did not surpass 10 points in a half-point scoring format. However, these past two weeks against the New England Patriots, he had 25 opportunities. Granted, Giovanni Bernard was out, but 15 points, finished at the running back 15. Followed that up as the running back 14 against the Miami Dolphins. Where are we at with Leonard Fournette? Oh, man. you yeah, I feel like this is fire. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. But this is the fire that you you get burned by because well that is most you, fire. Well, okay, that's fair. That's a that's a solid counter. I've um, never encountered a fire that couldn't burn. Well, me. let me change. Uh, let me. This fire is freezing. Let me change the analogy here, please. I think it is fire. <laughs> it's not just we're not on super smoke. This is this is a heated up grill with a fire that can sear a steak the problem is when you are cooking this Leonard Fournette on the grill I think you're going to accidentally touch the grill I think you're okay. going to put the knuckles on the okay. on, on the grill and you're going to go ah Bruce Bruce you got me again here's the deal um the, the the it hasn't been much of a change for Leonard Fournette. You talk about those first three weeks not being great. He had sixteen opportunities week one, fifteen opportunities week two. This last week, seventeen opportunities. Not very different. The difference, of course, for like a lot of fantasy finishes, is just touchdowns. Um, the matchup against Miami, we loved that this last week. He was mm -hmm. our start of the week. 
I I don't think the opportunities are going away. We saw them utilize him in the run to the Super Bowl. We've seen um, their hatred for Ronald Jones and their uh, despising of his fumbling. So I, I think Leonard Fournette is here to stay. I think this is fire, not smoke, but he isn't that good. And so I, I think he's fine. He is fine. He he is uh, he is not great. He's good, but he's not great. He's not a guy where like if you told me you know a, a, a star running back is getting seventeen touches a game, I'd be all about that. Um, I think Leonard Fournette is the type that needs twenty touches a game to have like a good fantasy finish. So um, he is someone that is probably in your lineup most every week. I don't think he's going to go away. I think he's here to stay. But your good fantasy performances are going to come in the better matchups. He does have 17 red zone opportunities through five games. The rest of the backfield, only eight. So he is being relied on to get those very high-value touches. Number two, this is a guy that we've been talking about kind of all year, mm -hmm. uh, it's Manny Sanders from the Buffalo Bills. You have three good weeks uh, in a row here, two superb, and one just, you know, he was fine. But where are we at with Emmanuel Sanders moving forward for the rest of the season? He, uh, The routes are there. He is currently the wide receiver 17 on the season. Cole Beasley saw his lowest snap percentage of the season this past week. Where are you at with Manny Sanders? Reliable wide receiver too, or just a flex? Uh, I I would not use the word reliable, um, but certainly I'm hot and bothered. I think he is someone that you can you you probably should throw in your lineup every single week. It's fi this fire is getting you hot and bothered. This fire is getting me hot and bothered. I am really close to the grill here. I'm like everyone's like Jay, back up. You're, that, you're, you're like, too close. No, no. I want to smell. I, I need to feel this. this swag you on the grill. <laughs> um, here's the reality. Last year, Cole Beasley was the wide receiver 26. We think of him as very reliable uh, for fantasy. He had a great season uh, last year, almost a thousand yards. He has been overtaken here. Like not not in the same um and, and not only has he been overtaken but more valuable targets. He's getting downfield targets and the air yards that we talked about from those first couple weeks that weren't materializing while Josh Allen looked a little I don't know rusty I guess. Mm -hmm. Um they're coming to fruition. So Diggs has uh <laughs> two fewer routes run than Emmanuel Sanders. He is an absolute huge part of this offense the reason I don't say reliable is just because if you look at how even Cole Beasley Cole Beasley you would say super reliable last year PPR guy just uh yeah it was yeah he was right he only had five games last year inside the top 24 at wide receiver Cole Beasley did and so while yeah, I think different different archetype though right uh, while I think that um Manny will have more inside the top because of those air yards I do think it will be inconsistent but you want you want to have them in your lineup every week to get the big games. So I guess if I have to call this, I'm definitely saying fire. Manny Sanders, until an injury comes at his age, I am playing him without hesitation. Number three, this one is far more difficult if you ask me. Miles Gaskin, this week's running back three in a matchup, of course, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> Because he had 10 receptions for 74 yards and two scores. Now, we know that Devontae Parker was out. Will Fuller was out. You cannot run on Tampa Bay. The, you know, this has kind of been the game script for all teams that are taking on the Buccaneers. They just pretty much abandoned the run. You, you, throw, you, you sprinkle in a, a carry here or there, but you, it's, it's not going to work. So where are we at with Miles Gaskin, who last year was – very good. He, the eyeball test says he is clearly the best running back on the team. Oh yeah, and yet two weeks ago, it, they were giving all these opportunities to Malcolm Brown, and the 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 concern of rational coaching is a real thing. Where we think a coach should be doing something because it's clear and obvious, aka, you know, like give Tyson Williams the ball for the uh, the Baltimore Ravens, and they're like, no, we're going to use Latavius Murray. 
Miles Gaskin moving forward, is he reliable? He's going to be playing Jacksonville and Atlanta the next two weeks? Yeah, the next two weeks matchups are are great. I don't think he's going to be someone that is reliable because the offense is going to be bad. Um, th there's two big questions here to me is when does Tua come back? Uh, because I think the offense will be better. I think it, I think he that they're saying he might be back this week. Right. Um, so – to me, I see that as an upgrade for Gaskin. I know that this last game came where he was the running back three from Brissett, but in general, the reason it came, the reason he was the running back three is because he got two touchdowns. I don't see two touchdowns coming as often with Brissett as it would with Tua. I agree with that, but still 10 for 74, even if you're not the running back three, 10 for 74 is a very usable fantasy running well, back. Well, and that leads me to the second one, which is Devontae Parker. I, okay. I, I think that Miles Gaskin was very necessary in this game because you've lost a lot of their targets. You had no Will Fuller, no Devontae Parker. Um, and so Devontae Parker, if he's back this next week, I think Miles Gaskin will be in the lineup um, because of the matchup against Jacksonville. But this is also a game where it's like, okay, the reason you had to throw on Tampa Bay is because twofold. One, you can't run on them, but two, you're down. Are they going to be down against Jacksonville? Could this become a Malcolm Butler type of game, like protect the lead, grind the clock, you know what I mean, as opposed to having 10 Malcolm receptions? Malcolm Brown? Yeah. You said Butler. Mm. You, I, sorry, you were, I, I didn't know where we were going. Yeah, no, Malcolm <laughs> Brown would be a better uh, running back to use. <laughs> Malcolm Butler, who retired yeah. um, cornerback? at cornerback, would not be as successful at, at uh, protecting the lead. We're in agreement. Okay. But... Um, <laughs> I think I think in general, Miles Gaskin is smoke. On the course of the season, like I would capitalize on a on a running back three finish, and I would try to trade him and get something for him. He's not a running back I want to rely on, even though he's got a, a nice schedule for the next two weeks. And and don't hear what I'm not saying. I don't think he's going to be worthless. I think he'll get five uh, targets every single game in a full PPR, more value. But this is not a team I really want and we've seen them just for some for no reason you know two weeks ago you got two opportunities in the game so mm -hmm. I would capitalize and move on yeah I, I agree here on miles it's going to be tough to trade him because you're this isn't a a player has one good week and you're gonna be able to trade high on him because he's had four essentially bad weeks so it it will take a package trade but I would try to get it done that was Where There's Smoke, There's Fire, presented by Traeger Grills. Put a Traeger Wood pellet grill in your starting lineup and make every game day more delicious. Head to, tra to Traeger.com slash footballers to discover just how simple wood-fired cooking can be. Before we move into the news and the notes, we want to thank today's sponsor, Stamps.com. Jason, if you got a small business like us, and we do mm -hmm, use Stamps.com. Mm -hmm. We do. You know there's nothing more valuable than your time, so stop wasting it on trips to the post office. Stamps.com makes it easy to mail and ship. Hey Mike, ask yeah. me the last time I've been to the post office. Jason, when is the last time you went to the post I office? I don't remember. It was probably when my mailbox was full and I had to go recover packages. It could be since 1998 because that's when Stamps.com, they, they've been uh, an indispensable tool for nearly one million businesses within minutes. You can be up and running, printing official postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send. You'll get exclusive discounts uh, on postage and shipping from USPS and UPS. Once your mail is ready, just schedule a pickup or drop it off. No traffic, no lines. Cut the confusion out of shipping with Stamps.com. New rate advisor tool. You compare shipping rates and timelines to easily find the best option. Save time and money with Stamps.com. There's no risk. And with our promo code FOOTBALLERS, you'll get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the home page, and type in FOOTBALLERS. That's Stamps.com, promo code FOOTBALLERS. Stamps.com, never go to the post office again. Mm, that sounds great. And we want to thank Head & Shoulders because Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology oh, is never, never not, not Working to give you up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. I'm loving the Never Not Working commercials with Troy Palomalu scaring, oh, man. scaring Patrick Mahomes everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> never Not Working. Uh, make sure you tune in on Thursday for our Never Not Working segment, where we as fantasy football managers have to be Never Not Working. I think this, right. week, this week's probably going to be 
you know, one of those post waiver weeks where you're looking at who was dropped, who can I pick up to make sure I'm thinking ahead about future bye weeks. You got to be never not working like head and shoulders with their scalp, scalp shield technology that works day and night to protect you against flakes. Regular use can, uh, I mean, it'll provide an invisible shield of protection against dandruff, against itch, against dryness, renewing your protection every wash. Get you got to take a- care of your hair, man. Absolutely. You're going to have dirty hair with, with flakes. flakes all over the place. Disgusting. It's nasty. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at Walmart.com. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. There is a lot of news to get through. Unfortunately, no larger story than this one. This broke during the game last night. The Las Vegas Raiders coach, John Gruden, has informed the team of his resignation. Uh, the, the team has promoted assistant coach and special teams coordinator Rich Bisaccia to the interim head coach. Out of the investigation into the Washington football team and the toxic culture that was there for a very long time, surface some emails where uh, from a very long span of time including up to as uh, soon as three years ago where coach John Gruden was using extremely racist language misogynistic homophobic uh, anti safety protocols like it was the New York Times article that came out was gross it's, a, it's, yeah, it's, it's a gross, bad bad look I mean it was gross to read uh, and it was like what is what is going to happen? How can this information be out there and nothing happen? Well, it happened. It happened. As it ex- should have. Extremely quickly. So John Gruden is out. Uh, I He'll be done in the NFL, and the Raiders will be moving on. What does this mean for the team? That remains to be seen. And was that – did this have something to do with the, the stink fest that the right. Raiders did this weekend? Because – Clearly, Gruden knew that this was about to hit the fan. Yeah, I mean, I I can't imagine, uh, you know, going forward here, it's not good vibes uh, for the Raiders organization. I don't think, even if if the players wanted Gruden out, that doesn't mean that you show up the next day and everything is great. Um, But but as far as uh, fantasy-wise, Bisaccia has been a long-time, you know, assistant with Gruden, so I would expect more of the same when it comes to personnel decisions, sure. offensive scheme, all all of those type of uh, of things. Obviously, Gruden was the offensive guy there, so there could be changes, but right now I think you've just got to uh, keep on schedule with your opinions and, until something on the field changes it. I have a, a special I, – I have a note here for if – like if Bisaccio wants offensive suggestions oh, let's, from, yeah. from a fantasy football analyst – Throw Brian Edwards the ball, man. Yeah, earlier. Just, just get him involved. Earlier in the game. Please. Just, he's pretty big. He's very good. Well, only when he t- catches the ball. Like, when I've seen him catch the ball, he's been very good. Yes. But when he's not targeted, he's he doesn't seem very good to me. This part of the game, not important enough for us to target Brian Edwards. We'll wait till <laughs> it's crunch time. But anyways, moving forward, Tiger Kill, he's not expected to miss any time with that That's knee good. injury. That's great. The news on Clyde edwards alaire it came out. Better than it could have been because it was a uh, it's an MCL sprain. He will miss a few weeks. Now we're getting reports from Jeremy Fowler that the uh, the Chiefs are looking into Marlon Mack. I don't know that that is a fantasy needle mover. Like, w- would you be stashing Marlon Mack? Daryl no. Williams is going to be the dude, and Jarek McKinnon is still there. I think Mack would just be a depth the, piece. The way bef- before Clyde went down in this game, it was a three-headed not, – not like, oh, three backs were kind of involved. It was like – It was cerebrous. It was like 33-33-33 these guys were involved. So, no, I'm not uh, – Mack is not a needle mover. In fact, if he is a needle mover, it's only a negative. Because right now, you've got Daryl Williams, Jarek McKinnon, a two-headed monster here. And I would prefer that for fantasy, especially, you know, we're going to be talking about what we're going to spend on these two players. If Marlon Mack shows up, then it's like, come on. 49ers coach Kyle Shanahan said Trey Lance suffered a knee sprain in the Week 5 loss. So they are on the bye week. 
We expect the team will try to go back to Jimmy Garoppolo once he is healthy, but now if he's not healthy, Trey Lance may not even be ready to go in week seven against the Colts. This is just more confirmation that it will be Garoppolo out there when they when they play the Colts. Justin Fields is good to go. Kenny Galladay will not good to go. Yeah, he's gonna miss week six with his knee injury. He could miss more. Uh, Kadarius Tony, we are on watch. Joe Judge had <sighs> Joe Judge had one of those quotes of they were like, Hey, what's going on with Kadarius Tony? Well, I don't think it's season ending. Well, come to, on, bro. Yeah, to be fair, he's like, I don't want to put anything out there. I don't know anything. It, it doesn't seem like it's a season ender. But as far what as is, this week, I'm not sure. I mean, what is that? This is a coach learning how his quotes are going to get picked up. Um, say less. Uh, uh, talk talk less, less. Smile more. Okay, <laughs> Joe. Um, so uh, this is this is good news. In fact, in that quote, he talked about how in that game he was kind of up and down with the ankle. I would expect Tony to be out. The, it, no, Wrong, uh, wrong verbiage wrong for you. Wrong verbiage. I was gonna say I would expect him to be out this week, but I meant like out, out there, there, out there on the field. So I think he's gonna play this week. You look now. You see, words are hard. Yeah, it can be difficult so to hard. communicate. Damian Harris dealing with chest and ribs. Uh, he is day to day. We'll see if he's okay to go next week. Eagles have. Oh, this is news to me. The Eagles have placed Dallas Goddard on the COVID nineteen list. Yeah, and so they play on Thursday, he is, so he is probably out. Yeah, that means in the waiver wire, Zach Ertz. I mean, we've talked oh. about it. I know, I know <laughs> it's it's gross, but oh. Zach Ertz, I believe, has more <laughs> more targets on the season um, than Goddard, and is a part. So if if the two headed monster becomes one, uh, you can play Zach Ertz. You can pick him up. He he it what, checking. Yep, he's available on your waivers. So. Go get him. Bruce Arians of the Buccaneers, he says Gronk is very close to being able to return. Gronk also plays on Thursday, so we'll see if he makes it. I would presume that this is very positive for Gronk at least the following week yes. if he's not back this week. Plan is, to be without him, though. Don't, don't allow this quote to catch you unguarded. In our league, I believe that Gronk is still like the, the number five tight end. Makes sense. That's he how dominant like, he so was. Many touchdowns. Joe Burrow was released from the hospital. He's absolutely fine. The the uh, what was a throat, throat contusion? So that's fantastic news. Samaj P. Ryan, the Bengals' backup running back, aka uh, the starter last week, he is on the COVID nineteen list as well. His is from a positive test, so expect him to be out. This will be interesting. The the, the positive test came pretty yeah, shortly after they played football. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunate, but. Like Joe Mixon only played twenty something percent of the snaps. Chris Evans, aka Captain America, we'll see what he is doing this uh, upcoming week. Browns coach Kevin Stefanski, we are unsure if Jarvis will be activated from the IR for Week Six against Arizona. Seahawks coach Pete Carroll said Chris Carson took a big turn with his sore neck, but also added, "We'll see how it goes." Thanks, Coach yeah, Carroll. Look, Chris, you don't want to. You don't want to hurt anything. Oh, goodness. This I is just, someone who stashed Alex Collins, isn't it? This is someone who... Or not, you, you're just concerned about I'm Carson just, Self. I'm just concerned for Chris, okay? Um, what an empath. Yes. Unbelievable. Uh, I want Chris Carson to heal up and feel really good. It has nothing to do <laughs> with my league of record team where my running backs... Are you ready for my running backs? Uh, yeah, let's hear it. Well, I've got, a, I've got David Montgomery. Oh, wait, he's out. I got uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Oh, he's out. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, he might be back. Okay. Yeah, he should. And I've got Chuba in case he's not. So I've got one running back there, and then the only other guy on my roster is Alex Collins. So I love you, Chris. Feel better. Don't so, don't push it. Sounds like you need to stay tuned for this next section. Yes, I do. Jason. That was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Download Sleeper and join their breaking alerts channels faster than every other source. Put me in, coach. The bye weeks are here. The Falcons, Saints, Jets, and 49ers will not be playing this week. Followed up by next week. Next week's the bloodbath. Bills, Cowboys, Vikings, Steelers, Chargers, Jaguars. Think about that for a second. Bills, they are a fantasy 
star team. Yes. Cowboys, a fantasy star team. Yep. Vikings, a fantasy star team. Steelers, Najee, Deontay. Chargers, your Mike Williams, your Herb. Like, and the Jaguars. I was going to leave them off, but okay. Uh, James Robinson. But that, I mean, this is a week where you're not just prepping for this week. You're also going to be prepping for next week. So uh, Thursday, we'll we'll have some uh, some players to maybe target ahead of time, ahead of next week's waivers. All right, top drop candidates from the people we asked, and they gave us the answers on Twitter and Instagram. Would you drop this player, Jason? Robbie Anderson. Totally willing to drop him. Yeah. Brandon Ayuk. He gone. The Bears wide receivers, Allen Robinson, Darnell Mooney. I would not drop Allen Robinson because of the name value. I would trade Allen Robinson. Um, I am, I'm okay dropping Darnell Mooney if you just don't want to keep hating yourself. Like, it, because right. it, he's been good. There's nothing wrong with Darnell Mooney. Um, he could be the one, but also if you keep him, you are relying on the Bears offense and that is a recipe for self-hatred. Sterling Shepard. Um, no, no, no. He's been he was he was great and should be back really soon. Kenny Galladay is gone. The Jaguars guys, Marvin Jones, Lavisca Chenault. Yeah, I don't th no. I I would not drop them, but I will be angry in the meantime. The the change of utilization for Lavisca Chenault. He was moved from the slot. He became an, a essentially a full time outside receiver because he has speed, and the other guy, the other guys. For the Jags, they're not outside wide receivers. Unfortunately, that turned into a ton of volume for those other guys like mm -hmm. Tavon Austin. I I wouldn't drop either of these Jags players just yet. But if you see another game of LaVisca with like no volume, Visca is it will be very scary. Visca is scary because losing DJ Chark has changed his role. He didn't have any rushing attempts. Um, and only three targets. So, he I mean, he is more of the gadget player. Like, the reason we liked him is because he was manufactured touches. But mm -hmm. now that's Tavon Austin. Um, hopefully they watch tape and say, this was a mistake. All right. The top pickup, it's Kadarius Tony, 31% rostered. Unfortunately, he has matchups with the Rams and Carolina coming up. But it's hard to argue with the production that Tony has has put on the field on top of that. Two weeks ago, Kadarius Tony was essentially a more or less a full time slot wide receiver. Not this week. He went to the outside and he succeeded in a big way with 13 targets, 10 for 189. Uh, he's not going to see 13 targets each, each and every week, but it's in the range of outcomes clearly. And, and he looks fantastic. He was targeted on on 50 percent of his routes. That's, that's insane. That is an absurd number. Which that is the statistic we've been talking about since before this season yeah. that you want to pay attention to. The targets per route run. It means when you are on the field running a route, how often are you demanding the ball? And Kadarius Tony is dominating that metric. Obviously, this last week, uh, part of that is because the other options were all dead. Um, sure. But two weeks ago... When Kenny Galladay was there, and and not everybody had fallen off, he still had nine targets. You talk about him being in the slot. He had a, He was a you know the wide receiver twenty nine two weeks ago. So the talent on the field, the explosive nature, the fact that this team, the offensive coordinator, everybody saw the breakout, says to me that he's going to be fine. So I know that the matchup against the Rams is bad, but I would pick him up and I would play him. Hey, it's me, Dave. Yes, I, Mr. Gentleman. I told you so. You were right. You're all stupid, and I'm not. Great pick with Daniel Jones. Um, Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Next on the list, Fireball Jones, a.k.a. Tim Patrick. He just keeps getting it done. He has a matchup against the Las Vegas Raiders coming up. He was 7 for 89. He and Cortland Sutton just continue to be heavily utilized in the offense. Jason, you made a, a very compelling case for uh, Cortland Sutton. Yeah, on yesterday's show of the, uh, to explain the two down games, which the same is true for Tim Patrick. So yes, he is he is absolutely someone you can pick up and you can play right away, at least on, for the foreseeable yeah, future is, where where Jerry Judy is out. He's very consistent. He's not the, the you know the the most exciting play, but nine targets um, in week. You're not five. excited to play Fireball? Well, I'm excited to play Fireball. I'm just not excited to play Tim Patrick. <laughs> 
Um, Come but, on. But he is, he is um, you know, seventh most routes run in week five among all wide receivers. And he's gigantic. So it's it's a it's a great combination. Yeah, he's a good player. Yeah, he, he really is a solid player. While Jerry Judy is out and Drew Locke is not the quarterback, yeah, pick up Tim Patrick. It's funny. I don't think we've ever – like, have we ever had a player on waivers as many consecutive weeks as Tim Patrick where you're still telling people, pick him up? Because week after sure. week after week after week after week it's worked, and then he's still not rostered in over 50% of leagues? Tim, we're, we're trying, buddy. Don't name your children Tim. It's <laughs> just too boring. That's my father's name. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry, he's, Pop. He's, he's pretty boring. Uh, Hunter Renfro, he just keeps getting targets for the Las Vegas Raiders. He has the second most third down receptions in the NFL. He's a good PPR guy he's, for points yep. for a known commodity, and he does have a touchdown uh, upside. He, he, while he's more of a, a slot PPR guy, they do look for him down near the goal line. Here we have a new name, Amon Ra St. Brown. The Detroit Lions rookie was drafted in the fourth round against Minnesota. He saw eight targets, seven for 65. But here's the, the, the big deal. Quintez Cephas of the Detroit Lions, he has fractured his clavicle. He's going to miss probably the rest of the season. But just in, in fantasy football terms, he is out for the foreseeable future. Tyrell Williams is still on the IR, not expected to return yet. People were very excited for, for St. Brown in the rookie season mm -hmm. because of this. Because it looked like the opportunity was there. Because the Lions didn't have an established wide receiver crew. And now the opportunity is there even more. They are playing very frequently in negative game scripts. Jared Goff is playing competent football. Where are we at with St. Brown? Should you pick him up? He's got the Cincinnati Bengals this week. A just a spot start at the flex, or are you just stashing him at this point? Um, oh man, I, I I think that you can if you're going to pick him up. I would pick him up if you're wanting to play him because um, he's he's someone where eight targets two consecutive weeks, six for seventy against the Chicago Bears, seven for sixty five this past week's past week against Minnesota. I mean, his snaps are going up. He's getting more involved. He's it, and that's what you would expect. He is a rookie. He will work his way into the offense, and now he is thrust into the offense. Yeah, he, I mean, he should have enough volume to be relevant. I'm, I'm curious how going forward in you know now that they've uh, now because of the collarbone problem, whether or not Hawkinson gets back to dominating the targets. Or if they, you know, if Hawkinson's taken out of the game and Amon Ra is necessary, he, he's certainly someone that should be picked up. Um, but I, I think if you're picking him up, you should be looking at him as a player that maybe you need to start um, and, and not, not just a stash. The Cardinals wide receivers are still there. Christian Kirk can have a big game at any moment, and he's wide, available in about half a leagues. But I want to talk about Rondale Moore. And he's been difficult. The The second-round rookie selection by the Arizona Cardinals, athletic freak, just absolutely off the charts. Six targets this past week, five for 59. He also saw three, three carries that turned into 38 rushing yards. The most important thing of this uh, analysis here, Rondale Moore ran more routes. He His snaps were fewer, but he ran more routes. Then Christian Kirk, could this be the transition that Rondale Moore is going to work his way further into the offense? Like we said for for St. Brown, it's a rookie. It takes time for some of these guys. If you're if you're not a first round pick, often it takes half a season or so before you work into the uh, the offense. And to me, I've kind of been all over the place with Rondale Moore, but this is this was enough for me that. You need to stash him or you need to trade for him because he can, in this offense, he can be a second-half star for your team. Yeah, I, I don't know that he's going to be able to be a second-half star unless there is an injury or something. And, and maybe maybe that injury is, is Max Williams. Who just, yes, who just also went that. down? Um, you know, he's been uh, the tight end for the Arizona Cardinals. Been soaking up a lot of targets over the last month. 
But I don't know that he's being worked into the offense really any more than he has been over the course of the season, speaking of Rondell Moore. Um, you look at the last month, 46% of snaps, 34, 42, 48. It's been pretty consistent. He comes on the field in certain you know formations, and he is absolutely electric. Um, but I view him almost identically to Christian Kirk in the sense that these are players you can pick up, you can put in your lineup, they can get you zero, they can get you 20. Um, the offense is great. The pace of play is great. They are a swing for the fences type of play. I would much prefer to have these guys who might end up with a five, four fifty line rather than a Deshaun Jackson, Van Jefferson type where you're really only hoping for a big play. Uh, so I, I, th I think they're fine, but there are, you know, I, I guess here's, here's the question. This is a philosophical question as a fantasy manager. When you're looking at a player like Amon Ross St. Brown, who you pretty much can be confident should have more targets, mm -hmm. more snaps, more involvement in the offense, but a much lower ceiling, would you rather have you know that or even maybe a Hunter Renfro consistent known targets for your waiver wire pickup of the week or shoot the shot at the high potential but lower floor of a Christian Kirk Rondell Moore. If I need a spot start this week, I would probably go to St. Brown. Take and, the points. But that means that I already have a bunch of guys on my bench that I'm ready. Like I'm ready for that second half. These are players that can I that I believe can really take off. And this is a matchup this is a matchup game as well. Look at your opponent. Are they one of the highest scoring guys in the league? Pick up your Christian Kirk, pick up your Rondale Moore. If not, then you know, if you if you're in a good, easy matchup or a an even matchup, then go with the Amon Ross St. Browns or the Hunter Renfros. Let me throw one other name out there that is available in a hundred percent of leagues. We looked over to this, we built this doc together, you know, and and put all these names in there and handcrafted. Handcrafted and we didn't even remember this guy. The reason we didn't remember this guy is because nobody knew who he was, including Andrew Siciliano, who kept saying that it was uh, Diami Brown. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Out there. But DeAndre Carter, yes. wide receiver for the Washington football team. Logan Thomas is gone. Curtis Samuel is gone. And that was really what, what happened. Yeah. He, ah. he, um, he became the wide receiver, too. He had eight targets. He was looked to all the time in this game. And they're playing the Kansas City Chiefs. Sure. So okay. it's like it's 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 hard because there's no history here. This is like a one of those glory plays where most people are going to say, "Who who is that?" But I think there there could be a shot. Or if you're in a in a deep league where the waivers aren't um, as as pr you know uh, fruitful, then I would I would think about DeAndre Carter yeah. as someone you could pick up. I would I would uh, certainly rather have him than his teammate Adam Humphreys. Um, because the targets, eight targets were uh, very nice. Yeah, if you're in a deep league, I like that call. Also, James Washington, we'll see if he's good to go for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was also uh, – you, you don't want to be on the groin index. It's just not somewhere that – you, you want that's not a status symbol. No, I mean you want to be on the website groinindex.com. Well, I, I guess you it's it's really good for your like social following. Yeah, it builds pub for you. Uh, but Washington was on it this past week with Juju being out for the the rest of the season. We'll see if James Washington can work his way into the. I mean, yeah, he if if I knew James Washington was active this week, I would probably have him up there with all the other names we're talking about. Um, so if before waivers run, you news comes out that he's active and ready to go, then I you know uh, make your waiver claims. Um, uh, accordingly and and Rashad Bateman of the Ravens should be stashed at the running back position guys are you willing to drop Jason Trey Sermon yeah bye bye on your bye Tyson Williams yeah I think at this point there's not much to see here I would be willing to move him for a, a better back Naeem Hines no Miles Sanders uh, that's no. gotta be a no no yeah the, the opportunities went up for Sanders and the snaps were there all right Latavius Murray is probably rostered. I get it. He's not available in my league, but just have a look because he is available in is he worth 32%. it though? I mean, because he would not yes. be my number one pickup. He to me, yeah, okay, I, I get that. Like I, I, I know he has touchdown opportunities, and and that you know, look, that's going to help you win a week. If you look back, he has three touchdowns in five games, and if you don't get those touchdowns, you got 
he's jack squat. He sucks. He's not good out there. Um, you he's know, good at dropping passes that Tyson Williams definitely would have caught. Tyson would have dominated. <laughs> I mean, his rushing yardage for Latavius Murray is here's his weekly game logs: twenty eight yards, thirty six yards, twenty eight yards, fifty nine, seventeen. I realize he is the clear lead back, but uh, as I talked about okay. in the recap, I I just don't think they're they're going to be that much of a running team anymore because they're like, man, we're not good at this. Fair enough. Devontae Booker of the New York Giants, Saquon Barkley left with an ankle injury. He'll be out two to four weeks. I mean, he'll. He, I would guess it's at, he's out at least three weeks would be my yeah. not doctor opinion. Devontae Booker widely available after Barkley left. 16 for 42 on the ground with a touchdown, four targets, ran a bunch of routes. Yeah, he was on the field for 88% of the snaps. Rams, Carolina, not the most uh, delightful matchups here, but he's going to be the guy. So, if you like your team, Jason, you need a running back. He's my number one pickup. And but, the Rams. And what what type of a uh, – so you would burn top yes, priority if top you had top priority it. on waivers. And what type of fab are you trying to – to it, lock in here for Booker. Well, it, it's tough because at this point in the season, t it, managers have different amounts of fab. So, like in our league of record, I got about half my fab left. Okay. So if I had all my fab, I would I would spend you know fifty if I need a back or or okay. or sixty. But when you're down to half your fab, it's tough to say spend fifty because that's now saying spend a hundred percent of what you have left. Um, in my world, I think he is worth thirty or forty fab if you are in need of a running back. Um, he is a guaranteed starter and the Rams defense, which should be one of the best in the league. They've been average. They're just an average defense. They're middle of the pack across the board against every position. So they have not been that scary. Um, he, I mean, is just whenever there is a back that comes in, I, and, and here's what you're getting. I think this is important to, to quantify what you're spending up for. You're not spending up for a superstar. You're spending up for an RB2. Yeah, you're, you're spending a up low end RB2. for opportunity in production. I will throw in, though, last year when Barkley was out, we had a run of replacement-level running backs in this offense mm -hmm. having strong fantasy success. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the truth is if this was... And Book, Booker has a three-down skill set. He's not just a jag where he's... You're like, well, he's good for first and second down. No, he can catch the ball. No, if if this was two weeks from now when their when their matchups were Kansas City and and the Raiders, I would be all about that. I would I would gotcha. be going in heavier. Um, I think he's going to be a low in RB two against the Rams and against Carolina. Daryl Williams of the Kansas City Chiefs. We know that Clyde is going to be out for a while. Daryl projects to be the next guy up. Uh, he's had five games with 12 or more opportunities, and in those games, he's averaged nearly 13 fantasy points per game. He gets to take on Washington, which is now a great matchup, apparently. Oh, one they, of the worst defenses Their in the defenses league. has fallen apart. Tennessee, the Giants. So are you sure you would prefer – do you like Booker because of the known opportunity? Because the matchups and the offense are there for Darrell Williams. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, th I think these guys are kind of 1A, 1B. Um, I prefer Booker because of the fact that they utilize their running back and there isn't he's going to be 85% of it. The way that I look at Darrell Williams is, you know, Jerick McKinnon is there. And he hasn't been that involved over the first month of the season, but last week he was on the field for 31% of snaps, and he was worked in. He was the passing downs guy. Um, so I think this is going to be closer to a 50-50. I would say a 60-40 timeshare in Daryl Williams' favor. He Daryl's the guy to target first, predominantly. Mm -hmm. he, would, he would be the one that will have the most fantasy points in this offense. I also think you can target Jarek McKinnon especially in a PPR sure. league, and, and pick him up. Uh, you know, if you don't have the fab to get one of these big names, let McKinnon fall to you, and you can grab him and get something. Um, but I would put him in that in that order. Booker, uh, Daryl Williams, uh, and then and then McKinnon. But obviously the matchups. Matchups are, are much nicer over the next two weeks for the Kansas City Chiefs. Lower tier running back options that could be available on your waiver wire. Alex Collins of the Seattle Seahawks, he received the 
majority of the work. Again, we don't know the status of Chris Carson, so I'm not going hard in the paint after Collins. But with Russell Wilson out, if Chris Carson is out, I would expect Collins yet again to be a focal point of the offense. For the Chicago Bears, Khalil, Khal Herbert. Khalil Herbert. And this one, this brings a smile to my heart because I Herbert was – he was that the guy in the rookie process where I was watching his tape from from Virginia Tech and saying, I think this player actually has juice. Now, I'm not a professional scout. I'm not an NFL GM. You're a little bit of a professional scout. Well, you know. I mean, we do sure. scout players for – during <laughs> for, a certain part, part of, of the year, we do scout <laughs> players for our job. So, you know. But anyways, Damian Williams, like, Damian Williams was – Heavily involved. He was the one who got the, the goal line carries. But Herbert, 18 carries, 75 yards. For 18 for 75 and looked good. Yeah, and he did look good. This is a – it's not Damian Williams getting everything. It's Herbert was also involved. Now, Herbert was more involved when they were up. So, yeah, perhaps it was just a game script that they're saying, Herbert is uh, – we, we're, we're going to let him, you know – grind out the clock and they have a matchup against Green Bay yeah, coming Hayden, up where they're probably not going to be doing that. Hayden Weeks pointed out some nice context there that in, in negative and neutral game situations it was still Damian Williams who was the guy. At the end of the game Khalil Herbert finished out with 17 of 18 touches when they had a lead later in the game. Um, so it's a question of did they make the transition because they saw something in Herbert and thought I'm going to ride the hot hand and maybe he right. gets more involved. Or is it they were up and they needed to protect the lead and that's how they view Herbert and they're not going to be in that situation against Green Bay. Obviously, Damian Williams is not going to be on your waivers. If he is, absolutely yes. oh, yeah, yeah, pick yeah, him course. up. If for some reason he was not scooped up last week, make sure to check for Damian Williams. Assuming he is gone, Khalil Herbert should be picked up. A.J. Dillon, in my opinion, still remains a must stash on your bench. You know, he's starting to get a little bit more involved in, in terms of opportunities. He had four catches for 49 and a score, and he looks more than competent in that area. I just, I'm not saying that he's taking over. That he's not turning this into a 50-50 timeshare with Aaron Jones. Jones is a superstar player. But if Jones misses time, as he frequently has, A.J. Dillon goes right into your lineup as a smash running back one start. Don't let the opportunity happen where Jones misses time and A.J. Dillon is someone now you have to fight on the waiver wire. He needs to be stashed. Well, I would, I, I agree completely with you, and he's he's working his way more onto the field. He's, he's trying to inch closer to being one of those Tony Pollard types where you can play him in a pinch. The flex with benefits, the, as I call him. Ooh, flex <laughs> with benefits. Yeah. Nice. Um, but the, the guy that I might look to um, even ahead of him right now is Brandon Bolden. Uh, yes, Brandon Bolden, running back for the New England Patriots. The uh, Obviously, Damian Harris, they say he's day-to-day, -day, should be fine, but he is a little banged up. They lost James White. Not only is he banged up, Jason, he fumbled again. Oh. And he fumbled on the goal line. Oh. Take him out back. <laughs> Take him behind the shed. Put him down. You, you know what Bill Belichick does when his running backs fumble. Since James White has been out, four targets, six targets, four targets for Brandon Bolden. And this last week, four receptions, which um, only turned into six yards. That was against Houston. Now they're going to be playing the Dallas Cowboys, a team that can score on them. And I think that the passing work Houston for was able to score on them, Jason. <laughs> yes, in the beginning, <laughs> yes. Houston did jump out to a lead. It looked like they should have won the game. But Houston only scored 22 total points. I would imagine that Dallas beats that number. Do you prefer stashing Brandon Bolden or stashing Ramondre Stevenson, the Patriots rookie? I just love Stevenson. I do too. The I, player, like i i would I would rather I would rather stash Ramondre Stevenson for the hope that what happened to him early in the year happens to Damian Harris, and Ramondre comes in and has the opportunity to be more of a focal point in the offense. Brandon Bolden will never be a focal point in the offense. Brandon Bolden will be a beneficiary of receiving work um, and gadget plays on the goal line, whereas Ramondre Stevenson. Like, if you if I had to plug one of these guys in my lineup this week and I'm in a full PPR, I might go Brandon Bolden, but the chance that Ramondre Stevenson could become something special rest of year exists. That doesn't exist with Brandon Bolden. Completely agree. 
Chris Evans, as we mentioned from the Cincinnati Bengals, he could be forced into more work if P. Ryan, in fact, misses the game because of the COVID test, if Joe Mixon is still not ready for his usual workload because of the ankle. Stash alert, Jeff oh. Wilson Jr. of the San Francisco 49ers. We've mentioned him a few times. He is available in 80% of leagues. He is eligible to come off the IR after their bye week against the Indianapolis Colts. You must pick up and stash Jeff Wilson you Jr. You have to pick him up. Have to. Even if you the don't team, have an IR. The team does not believe in Trey Sermon. No, not at all. And, and I, I won't be surprised if coming out in week seven, assuming Jeff Wilson is active, that it's Elijah Mitchell as the one. Um, I, I don't think that's... Uh, yeah, I you don't know, think that'll an unreasonable change. expectation, but Jeff Wilson will be utilized, will be valuable. Yes. Um, we've seen him. I mean, you won a championship last yes. year uh, off the back of a stash of Jeff Wilson, so do it again this year. At the tight end position, Ricky Seals-Jones, 99% of the snaps for Washington, the second most, most routes run at the tight end position. You can pick him up, and you can play him immediately against the Kansas City Chiefs. I, I like – picking him up like he went fully into the Logan Thomas role and more and Washington's going to have to keep up on the offensive side of the football Dan Arnold the Jacksonville Jaguars traded away a very high pick for him or a, a, a player who was drafted high first rounder and Dan Arnold eight targets six for 64 in fact if he didn't have a fumble I'm not mad at that which I believe the fumble was like his first touch of the game um, if he didn't have the fumble, his fantasy finish would have been uh, pretty good. Six for 64 at the tight end position is fine. He played on 73% of the snaps, still getting worked in. I would rather pick Dan Arnold up over Ricky Seals-Jones because okay. you have the chance of him being a long-term solution versus um, you know a, a short-term uh, Logan Thomas replacement. Um, if you have to pick someone up just for one week, just for I need one start – I st I think it I think it's Zach Ertz. You're playing against Tampa Bay. You got to okay. throw the ball a lot. He's going to be alone. Um, I would pick up Zach Ertz and just close my eyes. Yes, just, uh, and plug your nose. Yep, and turn my back. And don't operate heavy machinery. And walk away and don't turn the game on. And don't then, eat. And then uh, hope for ten. <laughs> hope for ten fantasy points. Uh, Hunter Henry from the Patriots. He's also at least a little bit interesting because it, he is separating in terms of routes run over Janu. He saw eight targets, six for 75, and a touchdown against Houston. I prefer Arnold and Ricky Seals-Jones, but Hunter, Hunter would be next on Hunter the list. Hunter Henry needs to be brought up as – I mean, they gave him a crap ton of money, and he's a good player, so it, it makes sense. It was, it's been very disappointing that that neither him nor Janu really had value – uh, for, through the first month of the season. Players who succeed in fantasy rarely come out of nowhere. They don't – they're not these – it's it's very rare for undrafted guys who've never done anything or low-drafted guys who have done very little to all of a sudden show up and do something. Hunter Henry is someone who has done it his whole career. He's been a fantasy success. He's running more routes than Janu. Back-to-back -to -back top 12 – finishes at the tight end position and really six targets five targets eight targets over the last three weeks he is involved Dallas is again a team that can score on the Patriots so Hunter Henry's not the worst pickup and with that I think we've exhausted tight ends yes uh, at the defense the DST position I should say here a couple options moving into the week the Colts will play the Houston Texans the Miami Dolphins will be taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, those are the ones I would be targeting. And then the Panthers against Minnesota, it's not terrible. And then the last one I'll throw out, Green Bay, they get to take on the Chicago Bears and a hobbled Justin Fields. You know, they, he's going to play. He's good to go. But Fields hasn't been, you know, lighting the world on fire, yep. with which we hoped that he had. Yep. Uh, yep. All right, let's get into our streamers. Full stream ahead. I'm going to give Andy one. Okay. He's not here. I'm going to give him one. What do you got? Joe Burrow. He's available in about 40% of leagues, so okay. he might he might not qualify that normal line. Um, but I, I think Burrow is going to be a, a, a great start going forward. He is long enough away from that knee injury. We He's, finally saw some volume this past week. Absolutely. Um, 
yeah, I, I said to trade for Burrow last week or, or pick him up off the waivers. I, I think he's a good play. But mine this week, someone that is available in the majority of leagues, is Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence finally has been uh, getting it done. And, you know, the Miami defense, the Miami team is just kind of not doing what they hoped. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Trevor Lawrence, the game is going to be in London. Uh, he's starting to run the ball. Uh, you know, the, the around the goal line, he can get the rushing touchdowns. And I, I just, you know, you you look at the the arc, uh, the the trend of these rookies, and sometimes it takes them a while to figure it out. He's still doing absolutely stupid, boneheaded uh, rookie things, but he was the quarterback nine this last week. Granted, Tennessee was a, a, an easier matchup, but I think uh, he's going to put that back to back and have a good performance against the Dolphins, who have given up a lot of points lately speaking of players that made boneheaded decisions last week taylor heineke i love this of one. washington this I'm, would be my start i'm if you are desperate at the quarterback position and you need a streamer this one's gonna it's gonna feel bad oh I feel, but i think I'll feel that, great i think you should go ahead and do it he's taking on the kansas city chiefs who in the past month have allowed the quarterback two, the quarterback two the quarterback seven and the quarterback four uh, Kyle the Borgogan hit me up with this stat. He oh, said a good one. The Kansas City Chiefs are allowing a first down on 43% of their opponent's pass attempts. <sighs> that is absurd. Yeah, you want to know how absurd for context? Sure. Mahomes is gaining a first down on 43% of his pass attempts, the best in the NFL. <laughs> so you're essentially you're playing Mahomes against himself. Yeah, I it's mean. It's a shadow match. The last four weeks, the Kansas City Chiefs, have given up the quarterback four, the quarterback seven, the quarterback two, and the quarterback two. Um, granted, those were much better quarterbacks than Heineke, but Heineke has slung the ball around. He is aggressive. Um, he, he looked he gets terrible after this last week. He just looked inaccurate and bad, but you know, you, you have bad weeks. Everyone has bad weeks, and I would be confident streaming Heineke. I would, I would stream him. Uh, over Trevor Lawrence as well. Once again, we want to thank Traeger Grills. Fire up that Traeger Wood Fired Grilled on or Grill on game day or not game day or yeah, really every day. Dinner time, lunch time. Yeah, I've uh, our our uh, friend of the show, biggest loser Brian Ketron. He recently got a Traeger and he yeah. did some. He was so excited that after he set it up, he did some grilling at like midnight. I mean, there is no wrong time to Midnight grill. steaks. I just made some jerky. Is Oof, that so good? Does that sound like a bad time, a steak at midnight? <laughs> that sounds like a perfect time. That sounds time like for a, a great steak. time. Set it and forget it. Controls. You maintain consistent temperatures to ensure perfect results. You get the Wi-Fi technology so you can just check. You check in on that steak on your phone from the comfort of your couch. We all have Traeger grills. We love our Traegers, using them all the time for it's it's Traeger season in Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, you got the ability. You can grill, smoke, bake, roast, braise, barbecue. You can do all of these things on just one grill from burgers, wings, brisket, and brownies. I just got the Traeger a, can do it all. I just got a brisket. I've never, I've never actually cooked a brisket, so TBD. TBD? Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I bet it'll be delicious. And also want to thank Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com, the best memorabilia site of all time. We got a Debo Samuel signed mini helmet that's on there right now. Currently sitting at just $50. That auction ends tonight. Use the code BALLERS when you sign up, and you're going to get a $10 credit. Oh, also, uh, I forgot this this important part. Traeger.com slash footballers. Oh. If you want to get it, you want to go check it out. Yeah, I do. Absolutely go check that out. And Pristine Auction, use the code BALLERS. Show some love to our sponsors. They help keep this independent podcast running. Jason, that was quite the show. What a great show. What was better, Monday Night Football or this show? Oh. Pr probably well, this show. Probably this show. Yeah, it's it's this show. That's true. But Monday Night Football was It was excellent. Unbelievable. That Just, makes, this show is better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck with your waivers tonight, Foot Clan. We will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.